I'll start. So, um, all right, so this is gonna be a talk about sending email from your website, and this isn't like sending mail in the aspect of, yeah, this is more like contact forms um, or automated emails that are sent out through WordPress. I'll go through the technical background, what's going on, how it works, how it used to work, and uh, why, why we have problems getting stuff in your inbox. Um, I'm gonna talk about DNS, the domain name system, because that's a big part of it. Then I'm gonna talk about the actual problem, and then I'll talk about plugins and solutions, then we'll do some, some Q&A. Um, I've been doing WordPress for a very long time. Uh, at this point, I, I first installed WordPress in 2005 and had a little blog for a little bit um, and then started doing development around 2008. Um, I now don't do as much development as I used to. Uh, I have a small agency so called uh, Clockwork uh, WP and you will see a lot of sideways eight things that are in this talk. Um, and that's my old agency. I have screenshots from this that Sideways 8 is my previous uh, agency and I just happen to wear this shirt because it's cozy. Um, but, uh, and then also I'm a uh, WordCamp organizer with Micah and uh, Daniel who's around here somewhere. We have that coming up in hopefully in October. So save the date. And then this talk, I also have it on YouTube, um, just youtube.com, um, and then uh, A. Ryman, just Aaron Ryman. If you Google Aaron Ryman, it probably will show up in, in YouTube. Um, but I have this talk uh, on there too, so if you need, well, what was that guy talking about, whatever, you can go back and watch it again. And this will probably be on uh, WordPress.tv also when we're, when we're done. It's just sometimes that doesn't happen, so I figured I'll throw it on, on YouTube. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna go through and explain it because I like people to understand what the actual problem is as opposed to just slapping a plug-in and calling it, you know, here's, here's how we fix it. We don't know what the problem is, but this is, you know, here's, here's the solution. I like to walk you guys through it. It's gonna be a little boring, but um, I, think it's, I think it's worth it. So, um, in the 1990s, which, it's a long time ago. Um, this, is, this is how it used to work when someone would go to your website and fill out a form. Uh, the sending server would say hello and it literally sends a hello command to wake up the server on the other end um, and says, I have an email for you for Bob uh, at yourcompany.com and it responds and says, great, send it. The sending server says, here you go, my job's done and the receiving server says, I got it. It's a little different now. Now when you fill out a form on a website, the sending server says, hello, I have an email. Um, the receiving server says, oh, yourcompany.com. Let me go check the DNS records and see if you're allowed to send mail for this domain. And if you're not set up to receive that email, it's gonna be rejected. That's why things are flagged as spam in Google apps. Um, and other, other filters. Um, but for, um, as far as the website, it looks like it's sent because it did the send command and it sent the email, it just wasn't received. So the contact form looks like, you know, someone fills out the form, they think, oh, they're gonna receive the message that I sent. But it's like, maybe, um, maybe not. Um, and that's, that's the crux of the problem here. So, um, so what is DNS? Uh, DNS is domain name system, and anytime you try to go to CNN.com or FoxNews.com or wherever you go, your browser, you type in, like, let's just say Clockwork WP. You type that in, your, um, your computer looks and connects to a domain name server and says, here's the IP address for Clockwork WP, pull that up. Um, it's very similar to a phone book. With a phone book, if you're trying to get in touch with me, you would, you know, Aaron Ryman, so you'd go to the R's, find Aaron, and there's the phone number, and then you would dial. Very similar when it comes to DNS. So that's simple explanation of DNS. DNS can be extremely complex. There's all of these things that are DNS that I actually rarely touch. Um, the ones that are Red or, and bolded are ones that I have used in the past and the ones that are in red are the ones that I use regularly. And in this case, for if you're gonna be setting up 
some of the plugins that I recommend in this, um, or if you use SynGrid or Mailgun, these are some of the records that you're gonna have to edit. You're gonna have to edit your C name, maybe create an MX record, and set up a TXT record. But the tools that I recommend, they all walk you through that. So it's, it's really cool um, and really simple. It only takes about 10 minutes if you have all the logins to everything you need to log into. Um, but it's, it's a pretty simple process uh, once you've done it once. It's a little, little confusing at the beginning. Um, what are MX records? Um, they are mail exchange records. Let me drink some water. And I think this, uh, this screenshot still applies here. Um, but uh, basically, it is any, anytime you send mail, when you send mail to someone, it looks up what are the MX records, meaning where should that email be going. Um, and it's basically public information. So you can go to MX Toolbox and just type in where is, um, where is this email hosted. And I, I, use, I use this tool somewhat regularly when a client has, has an issue, say, we're not getting your mail or, or whatever. You know, the first thing is, okay, well, I can use MX Toolbox to look up and say, okay, well, where, are, where is the email supposed to be going? And that's kind of the first step. Where is it going? And then you figure out, okay, is it Google Apps that's blocking it or, or whatnot? So what happens when you're sending mail from a web server? Um, in this case, I have an animated GIF, and it's GIF, not GIF, um, But because uh, uh, I'm, I'm old, and that's what we used to call it in the 90s. So I have an uh, animated GIF here where I'm SSHing, which is a way to log in to a server. I'm SSHing in, and I'm running this command mail. Um, and basically, I put the subject in, who it's going to, put the message in, and I hit Control D to send the mail. So you, I can SSH into a server, log in, and send mail. It's not as good as using something like uh, an email client, but that is a way to send mail. And that's exactly what tool is used when you are filling out a form on a website. Um, so this email that I logged into my dad's website, it's no longer hosted there, so I don't mind showing IP addresses and, and whatnot here. Um, but this, when I hit send here, this is what it looks like um, on, in Gmail. It was sent on an A2 web server, which is totally fine. I've had, I've had a server on A2 since 2006, so I'm trying to set a record probably for a hosting client there. Um, but when, when you send it, it looks kind of weird because it's, even though it was set at jimryman.com, the web server is not really set up to send this mail properly, so it's getting you know this A2 S37, um, and Google's like, this looks like spam, so it was flagged as spam. It went into the spam folder um, because it's not, it it went through the right channels, but it's not, it doesn't have all the markers basically to for it to be seen as valid email, so that is pretty much what happens when you fill out the form and the a2s37.a2hosting.com you know it's it doesn't have a dmark it doesn't have um dkim records it doesn't have all it's basically not set up to send mail so it it's going to be it's going to be setting up uh throwing errors basically um and seen as spam we could go into where i have my dns and put in um, the A2 S37 blah 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 in here in your TXT your TXT record your SBF record um, if you guys are familiar with that um, but that's one way to do it but if I ever move the site from uh, A2 to something else I would have to update that it's kind of a pain in the butt so um, how does WordPress send mail and I'm, I'm telling you guys a lot of information just so you can understand that the SSH thing that I just did where I logged into the server, the animated GIF in there, is the same thing as here um, when you fill out a form. Because if you look on line 415, um, when the mail function is called within WordPress, it says right there, it has a comment. It says, it's set to use PHP's mail function. 
And what does PHP do? So WordPress passes it to PHP, and PHP actually passes it to command line tool to send that mail. So I'm showing that it's the exact same way SSHing in is the same as sending a form on the website. It's just you're doing it through a web browser, whereas in my example, I SSH in to do it. Um, it's not a great way to deliver mail. And on my servers, I don't even install mail uh, because 99% of the time when my sites are hacked, they're, all they're trying to do is become a relay, an email relay, relay server. And so I don't even give them the opportunity. So if they were to hack into my server, it's not, they're not gonna be able to send any mail. This is actually just my local machine, but I was just, just showing, I, I just don't install mail. Um, so why do you need a solution? Um, my, uh, mail might not be installed on the server, um, and things like WP Engine, they, they send mail, but they have a, um, an unknown number of email that they allow to be relayed through their server. I don't know what that number is, someone at WP Engine does, but if I had 10, 10 uh, people on, on that server and they were all filling out forms, I, eventually they could hit that, whatever that number is, and the mail wouldn't even send at all. So it's important to have something to, to fall back on. Um, mail from a web server might not be, or might be seen as spam. Uh, the DNS is probably not set up to accept mail from the web server because we don't set them up that way. Um, and what if a web server changes name servers of the IP addresses? How do we, how do, we do this? Well, we do that, um, we have a couple different options. We could ignore it and actually have one client, I had this conversation with them and they were like, we don't care. Um, and I said, why not? They said, well, we use HubSpot for all the forms. So it's using the, the HubSpot API. And, and I said, well, what about password resets? If someone needs to log into the site, they're like, they'll just send me an email saying I can't get in and I'll reset the email. And I said, okay, then the, the problem solved for you. You don't have to worry about it because they literally don't send contact forms um, in by using HubSpot. It's not sending mail. It's using their API to send it. So it's not sending mail at all. Um, but I would say 99% of the people aren't in that boat and they need some kind of solution. So what's the solution? Use a plugin uh, to do it and use either I'm a big fan of SendGrid or Mailgun, and I'll give you a couple screenshots kind of just showing you why, why I like them. And I recommend both of them. Just look at the prices on them. Um, SendGrid can be free, um, which, is, which is awesome if you, have, if you send less than 100 emails a day, it's free. Um, and if your website is sending more than 100 emails a day, you probably can afford uh, you know, to pay, pay for the service if that number goes up. But I mean, SendGrid's really cheap. Um, and which plugin, if you guys were to look at this, which plugin would you install? The one with the most, uh, <laughs> yeah. So the one on the left um, is enticing because it has 2 million active installs. Um, but I'm going to call them out. It's almost false advertising because it says it's the most popular SMTP and email log plugin. But if you want the logging part of it, you have to pay. Um, so I don't recommend that plugin. Um, and I did this talk in, uh, in September at WordCamp uh, Netherlands and one of the developers came up and talked to me afterwards. So that was, <laughs> that was really fun. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I said, I said, I, I have no issue, no issue with the plugin. It works. You know, it's just, it's different, different models. The plugin that I really like is the second one here. This, this one. Uh, it still has three hundred thousand active installs. I mean, that's a good, solid number. Uh, not as good as two million, um, but I'll show you why I really like this plugin. If we were to click on that, basically, this is their, this is their page here, and when you install this plugin. You can use SMTP, uh, Gmail, SendGrid, Mailgun, whatever, I, either one. And if one of them stops working for you, you can switch services real easy to do. One of the things that's even better about it is if, let's say you use SendGrid and SendGrid uh, all of a sudden stops sending mail and it's giving you an error message, 
you can set up a fallback to, so you could set up an, like a Gmail SMTP account and if account, the first method fails, it'll try that. If both of those fail, you can get a Slack notification um, of it. So I have a couple clients that their whole website really functions on email. Uh, it's you know e-commerce, they have to get notifications and stuff like that. And if it stops working, they need to get a notification. And this is a free plugin, no, no cost to you, and you can get Slack notifications when things fail. Um, not a bad thing for any of your clients uh, to have that type of setup. So that way you can, you can contact them proactively and say, hey, your website's broken, do you want me to fix it? You know, and then charge them and, and it's, it's a good thing. And then the last thing that you get with this plugin that I really, really like is logging. Um, so if option one and two fail and Slack doesn't um, land in, in your Slack, whatever, and everything's complete loss and you find out a week later that everything was broken and we, we have a week's worth of email that hasn't gone out, you can go into it and hit send, 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 send once you have it fixed. So really great plugin. I have it on 95% of the sites that I host because it's a, it's a good, good tool. Um, and then when you're using that plugin, you need to pair it with the service that delivers the mail. And you can use Mailgun or SendGrid, both of them have a plugin that they don't, neither of them really maintain. <laughs> um, so I, I think this plugin is gonna be a better, uh, better fit. Um, but I wanted to show you guys, this is when you're setting up Mailgun, all you have to do is set up a couple TXT records, a C name, and two MX records. I mean, I know that's intimidating for some people, but that's a, that's a five minute thing and you're up and running pretty quickly. And one of the things, now I'm gonna actually gonna switch over to SendGrid here. Um, the, and Mailgun does the, the same thing here, but this is when, before when you would send an email, that's hysterical. I was hiding things and things moved. So I'll have to update those slides, my bad. Um, anyway, this, uh, before when you would send an email, you would have no record. Like if, if you're not using a third party tool like this, um, it, you, once you hit send, it's, it's sent and you have no record of it and you have no way to really test things. But if you're using SendGrid or Mailgun, it'll tell you like, hey, it was sent and it was blocked and here's why it was blocked. Um, so it gives you so much information about um, the problem that you normally wouldn't, wouldn't have if you're not using one of these services. All right wrapping it up, and that was probably a little faster than I expected, so flew through it, but that's okay. Um, so to wrap it up, don't use your host's email um, to, to send mail. It's not as efficient uh, or as secure in the aspect of things might get lost if you're using that. Use a third-party tool and use either SendGrid or Mailgun or a service like that. There's some cheaper ones out there too. I mean, do, do some research, but those, those are the ones that I recommend. And this is a really cool tool that I just happened to run into. Um, you can send an email uh, to check-auth at verifier.port25.com. Send an email to that and it will respond with a lot of information about how your email is set up. Um, and I realized this week that I didn't have a, a DKM record uh, for uh, clockworkwp.com. So I did a little YouTube video, five minutes, and got, got, got that uh, set up. But I just didn't realize I didn't have that set up. And that's a great little tool that gives you some information. Just a, not super related, but kind of related to the topic. But I just I tend to use that regularly now. So. And then that's it for me. So I am here. Anybody got questions? Who do we have a? Do we use this? Do we need a microphone? Nah. We do. For transcription. For trans. Okay. Oh, it's live. Aaron, I have a question. Aaron, not to be dense, but would you explain why you're using two tools 
to move this email? Um, I, I use one, one or the other. You don't need both. Um, and I have some clients, basically, um, at some point, one of them became free and not free. And I think, I think Mailgun used to be free, and they, did not, they didn't stay free, but it's too hard to move people over. So I have some clients on Mailgun, and, and it, I have, it sends about 4,000 emails a, a month, and it only cost me $3 or so. It's not worth the time to migrate them over to save three dollars a month you know so i'm just gonna stay on mailgun probably for for them um and then the the newer clients i'm on SynGrid for for the majority of them and when if you have to edit like these files the spf or kins or all these things that i've heard of that's you actually go into your wherever your dns is and you go into your dns settings yep yeah, so if you're going to set up Mailgun, in Mailgun and SendGrid, they walk you through it, like add a domain, and it'll say, what's the domain? And then the next screen is, now you need to add these records, and, and you just they have like copy buttons. You hit copy, then you paste it into your DNS. It's, it's relatively simple. I mean, it's, it's tedious, but I mean, it's with, with the instructions, it's not too bad now that they have fixed the documentation. There was a bug in the documentation before, and I was, I burned. That's why I'm balding uh, because of, because of that project. But um, yeah, there's there's a bug in the documentation at that point, but it's fixed now. So, but bo both of them are good. It's just look at the pricing and make sure that it's going to fit for for whatever uh, use case it is. So, can you? Uh, Pass that. Thank you. Hey, I got in a little late. I saw a, a video that was, uh, had to do with a hosting company, but nevertheless, they said that you should never have a, a Gmail email. I mean, I'm not in business yet, but I got here kind of late. So for a business email, you shouldn't use email or Yahoo or anything like that? It, I mean, so that's to me just more of a uh, preference in looking professional. Um, I mean, I could use Aaron.Ryman at gmail.com for my business, but it doesn't look like a real business. It looks like I'm uh, moonlighting, um, you know, as opposed to using, you know, clockworkwp.com for my business. Um, so it's, it's, it doesn't, that's more of just like a, a preference, but I mean, a lot of, I do have some clients that are using their Gmail account and I, I tend to push them to be like, just pay the $6 a month for the, for for the, for the Gmail account. It's so. a Google workspace. It used to be called uh, Google for Business, or Google Business Suite. Essentially it's Google workspace. You pay, I don't know, $12 a month and you can be whatever you want at yourcompanyname.com. And I really hate when clients have their email hosted at GoDaddy or Bluehost or wherever because if if you have it through Google, it's a Gmail account, but it doesn't say at Gmail. It says at your, your whatever your domain is. Correct. It's professional, and Google is not going to go down. Whereas I once had my early on, I had my email hosted at my website hosting company, and I didn't have work email for two weeks. That is terrifying. Yeah, I I think. A service and from someone that used to manage mail servers and stuff like that, it's not to me. It's not worth the headache of having having your own uh, email. I mean, unless you just really like setting up mail servers um, and dealing with the headaches when it doesn't work. Like when it's broken, it can be very hard to fix and it gets uh, problematic. To uh, if your email's down, that's very stressful, you know, uh, case. So yeah, I definitely don't recommend, I mean, use using Google Apps or something like that. And I, I, I do the $6. Uh, I don't need the $12 plan. The $6 is, like, good for me, so. There's a $6 and a $12. Huh? It's $6 for each domain, or each user. I have, like, seven users. I, I just want to put out that Google is like, gee. I have a client who has... They had hosting at GoDaddy. I moved, we had to redo their website, so I hosted them. Their new hosting is at SiteGround, so I had to move the A records from their domain over to SiteGround, 
And the reason I did that is I had to leave the MX records. I had to leave their email over at GoDaddy because moving all their email from GoDaddy would have been like nightmarish, I believe, and super time consuming. I said, you know, just keep paying GoDaddy, leave your email there. I'm not going to touch the whole domain name setting, all the DNS. Just I'm going to point the A records oh, over to, to SiteGround, Siteground, which gave us the website at SiteGround. And it, it just, these different records can be very confusing. Yeah. Does anyone else have any questions? Oh, yes. go ahead. So, uh, to answer a question that you had earlier before on the uh, where to change the SPF records, that's through your DNS provider, GoDaddy, whatever, not through your actual it's hoster. your domain registrar. Do your domain or, registrar. That's where yes. you tell everything to point wherever it's going to point. Yep. Yep. Yes. So, just to clarify that one, yes. uh, the question I had for Aaron is. Um, if you're using something like SendGrid, where their business model is entire, entirely around sending emails for you in a supposedly secure fashion, what stops someone else from signing up their own account and sending emails as someone else at clockworkwp.com? So when, when that's where you put the TXT records in there, um, that it's basically showing ownership of the domain. Through through the TXT records that you put in there. The TXT records for SPF authorize send to send email. There's a couple different records that um, so you'll do an SPF um, then the DKM record in there. So that's that's what's stopping you from that's how it's verified through that. Does that make sense? On the DNS side, yes. Where do you set that up in the, on the website itself? I'm not. I'm not 100% sure if I'm following. I apologize. Can I answer that? Sure. Yeah. If you pass the. So, wherever you have registered your domain at, whether it is, would not necessarily have to be where it's hosted, yeah. but if you, whatever company is controlling your DNS records, whether it's Cloudflare whether it's the registrar that you bought your domain from or whether it's your host, that's where you put that record. Yeah, but like I guess, I just think, I guess his question is where you pointed the, your WordPress website to send to send read and make sure that that bridge is so, so when you, so you go into, um, you go in here, and when you select SendGrid or Mailgun, um, it'll ask you at that point for your API key from SendGrid. And then from SendGrid, when you, when you send an email, it passes that API key, um, ver and that shows that it's verified, and then that's how it gets triggered. Does that answer? May maybe. <laughs> All right, I apologize. Um, I think, yeah, in the back. And I can talk to you later too. It, it, so apologize for not following. <laughs> so a lot of the email sending that you've been talking about is primarily for transactional emails from your website. Correct. What about, can you discuss a little bit about having emails, regular emails, like when, if I want to send something to you coming from my website as opposed to using Google Workspace or something so that I can ensure the deliverability is better than just when I sign up for something. How would you send a mail, an, an email, though, through your website? I'm so not. Within cPanel, I can set up email accounts. OK. And then the hosting account is then sending them out. Basically, that would, that would make it an SMTP um, email account, right? Yes. OK. In that, in that case, you can. The, the one that's selected right there, you can tell it to use SMTP, um, and then it'll ask you for the username and the password uh, and the mail server, so you know whatever your domain is or whatever the mail's going to, and you can drop it in there, and you can use uh, cPanel to send the mail. Um, the, the thing that you, you'll lose in, if you're using that, and there's, it's not like there's anything wrong with that until it doesn't work. <laughs> um, you know. Um, it, you won't have the ability to go through the um, 
this this type of screen that gives you that type of information, the logging, why it why it failed. Um, so it's I mean. It, using going using your SMTP through cPanel is a much better solution than not doing anything at all and just doing the default WordPress. So I mean that that's a fine. I mean, it's a it's a using SMTP is a good way to do it. It's not the best way, but it's definitely better than doing nothing. So, um, but but that would work. And in in, in, a, in that case, there's no cost to. I mean, if you're already paying for for that uh, through SMTP through your cPanel account, there's no cost to you. So. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Micah, do you don't have questions? I'll just say one thing, which you're talking about with that cPanel. There's a lot of folks who will use a firewall called CSF. They serve with the firewall, and that will have in it something called SMTP block. That's usually turned on by default. That stops spam. Your host. You could do it if, you, if you're comfortable doing it, but you're, you could open a ticket with your host. Say, please enable this cPanel account in SMTP block, mm. and then they'll get that open for you. Yeah, and I know nothing about cPanel anymore. I'm, I haven't really touched cPanel probably in about six or seven years, so thank you. And to your point there, you won't know what happens, but depending on if you're on shared hosting, you have your own VPS. If you have your own VPS, you have root access, you could access to mail log or uh, share hosting, you should be able to open the ticket and they can check the mail logs and see where did this problem occur. But if, if you're not comfortable doing that or you don't want that hassle, the API solutions work really well. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'll be, I'll be around. Uh, if you have questions, uh, feel free to talk, talk to me. Thank you. <laughs>